Friends, it's time for you all to put your picking practice into practice. By that I mean it's time for you to now learn to play a full tune with what we already know. We're going to do this one. Stick with it. Don't listen to the first bit and run away going, oh, it's too hard, I can't do it. You can't, promise you. Listen to it first and I'll, I'll explain. Donovan. Tangerine Puppet and uh, Donovan did it. For those in America, you'll know Donovan as the guy that was a bit like Bob Dylan. You know, blue is the colour of match. Oh, yellow. <laughs> blue. They're all actually, it's not a bad lyric that because everyone in Britain now does have bluer, you know, left wing people tend to have bluer. I don't know whether you've noticed. Anyway, I don't want to get into politics. Um, yellow is the colour of my true love's hair, as Donovan said. Oh, I've got myself into trouble now. Okay, so. Um, Tangerine Puppet is the name of the track. He plays it with a capo on at the third fret, if you listen to the record, which actually makes it a lot easier to play. I'm not gonna do it on this tutorial because a lot of you may not have a capo and it would uh, make it tricky for you. So we'll learn it and then put a capo on the third fret or second fret, whatever, and it'll bring the frets closer together and make it that much easier to play. Right now, before we start to play, if you look at the link below, you'll see some paperwork, all right? And there's not a lot. Um, there's a lot of repetitive stuff. Um, and it'll look like this, all right? Now these, the, for new people to the channel, this is my idiot-proof way of doing things, and it works very, very well for those people who are not, uh, I don't like tablature that much. It's all right for lead guitar when you're playing one note at a time, but for doing stuff like this, it's, it's no good. This is the way to do it. Um, so these, should, these dots represent your fingers clearly, finger numbers, where you put your fingers, in this case, we're at the fifth and the seventh fret, and down here are the string numbers that we are going to play, all right? So all those numbers that you see there, um, five and one, anything in a bracket, for example, you'll play those strings together. Anything, this bit under here, with the beats, you know, if you wanted to count along, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, etc. You'll get it as I go along. So the first thing to do, if you haven't already done is hit that subscribe button, because that's, um, I'm 25,000 now, thanks to you, so thank you for that. Um, I'm getting excited, because my son is on 300,000, and I'm slowly, <laughs> slowly catch it up all right so uh, that would be nice to do that um and thank you for those people who've pressed that there's a thanks button that people have been pressing and i didn't know it existed until uh, yesterday so whoever pressed that whoever when they do it, they, it they, it's like a little donation thing to the channel which i didn't know you could do um and something i wasn't expecting so thank you for those people that are thinking of doing that or, or have already done it um it's a nice little surprise that so thanks for that right let's get straight on to it the first chord we're going to play is don't worry about the name of the chord. It's an A minor added ninth. Uh, what did that mean? It means you're gonna put two fingers on the neck of the guitar, all right? Most of this stuff is, the longer the name of a chord, the, usually the easier it is to play. So we're on our third string here at the fifth fret, all right? Where most of you should have a nice convenient dot on your guitar, okay? And your third finger is gonna play the fourth string at the seventh fret, where again, you should have a convenient dot. So that's the only shape that we have to worry about, really. And once we're on there, we're going to be able to play this much of the track. Which is quite a lot, really, when you haven't got to move your left hand. All right, now what's the pick doing? Well, if you look at that Travis picking thing I did uh, a few weeks ago, it's that with a slight modification. Let's look at it again for those newcomers. First of all, your thumb is going to look after the fourth string in your fifth, all right? And these three fingers are going to look after these three strings. And it's important that you do this, all right? You could actually play this with one finger, that, like as I used to do, till I was told off for doing it. Um, but I would recommend that you use this piece of music to get these fingers to work properly, all right? Which opens the door for all the other stuff we're going to do later on. All right, so it says on your, on your paperwork below, it says you're going to play strings five and one, and they're in a bracket, so you're going to play five and one together, like this. Done. 
All right. Then if you look to the next three um, diagrams, you've got four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four. So four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four. Do you see that? And you, did you notice that after the five and one, you've got inner, outer, inner strings, outer strings. It's a nice way of remembering these things. So five and one, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four. That's page one completed. All right. Page two. Oh, we're on the same chord. And we're going to play the same thing. Five and one. Four, three, five, two, four. And then there's a change. We play, if you look down at the bottom of diagram three, you'll say it's, it says five and two, open. Wave to the milkman, all right? Then you're gonna play an E major, or an E as it's commonly known, on five and three. All right, so we've got five and two open, then five and three on the E. And then the final diagram on page two, we drop these three fingers on E to an A minor, and we're gonna play five and three again, and then a four. Okay, let me play that page two from the top. Five and one, four, three, five, two, four. Five and two open, five and three on the E, five and three on the A minor, then a four. And then we repeat all of that, page one and two, three times, so we're gonna do it four times in total, all right? So if I play page one and two together, this is what it sounds like. Page one. Page two. All right, I'll do that again. One. Page two. And underneath it, you'll see the beats one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and so that's the main part of the track. If you can do that, you should be able to do that once you've got the hang of the picking. Now, while you, when you're practicing your pick, say you're watching TV with your friends or whatever, and you want to practice, but you, they're going to go mad because they're watching Star Trek or something. That doesn't matter. You can do this. You can just have your guitar, put your, put your fingers over the, mute them off so you can't see anything, and just do this. Now, I've just played the whole of that picking section on, on pages one and two without making a sound really, just making the percussive sound. It's a great way to get the right hand to know what to do. I'll do it again, okay. And I'm all I'm looking at now, I'm not looking at the chord shapes, they're easy. I'm looking at the pick down below, five and one, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, five and one, four, three, five, two, four, five and two, five and three, five and three, four. Okay, and we just do it nice and slow. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and eventually da, da, ka, da, ka, da, da, ba, ba, ba. put the chord on with the left hand and you get that and it sounds great okay so we do that four times then we're on to um, where are we? We're on to part two. Um, if I can find it, hang on. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Right, I've got it. Part two. All right. Just spend ages doing part one. Get that in your head. I mean, that'll be impressive enough. But part two, um, it's worth doing this because you again, you're going to play one daft J. It's called a D minor added ninth. Big fancy name for what is like. If, if you want to know what they had to get used to the shape. Think of a D7 that you know here, bring it up one to the next strings and then they'll hit and that's what it is, all right? It's like a D7 shape, but played on the third string, the fourth string and the second string. So it was nice to know that because it's a shape that you're familiar with, but not in that position on the neck. You're used to playing. Okay, so this is the shape we're gonna play now. Let's look at the, um, at the pick down below. No surprises, it's exactly the same as what we've just done. Five, five and one. Four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four. All right, 
page three is done. On to page four, a straight A minor. Five and one, there's a little bit of movement here. Five and one, four, three, five, two, four, five and two, four, three, five, two, four. On to page five, back to the, this shape, the D minor added ninth, exactly the same as we did before on, um, what was it, page three. Five and one, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four, three, five, two, four. And then, where's page, where's the, where's the final bit of this section? I've just seen it. Stay where you are, don't talk, talk amongst yourselves or whatever it is. Hold on, here we are, I've got it. We've got, this is the final bit of the tune. Five, uh, an E seventh on page six, five and one, four, three, five, two, four. There's our E7 third. Don't forget all the diagrams, everything you need to do is on the paper. Five and one, four, three, five, two, four. Then five and one to the fourth string. And then an E seventh with an added seventh. What does that mean? Well, instead of just having these two on for E seventh, we're gonna add our little finger to the second string at the third fret. And we play five and two, and then hit a four, all right. Let me play the whole of that section, all right? So, here we go. Now, when I did the demo of it at the beginning, you may have noticed that there were a few little hammer-ons going on, which I didn't mention then because I didn't want to you know, do to say too much too soon. But if we look at this, if you have a look at this paperwork, you'll see above the threes here, you'll see a little H. And what that's telling you to do is whenever you hit that third string, you, you, you start the, uh, playing that string open and you hammer on to the third string. And it'll look like this. Now, this is something you should only do once you've got the pick fully mastered and the left hand knows what it's doing. All right, don't try and do it too much too soon because you'll just get, you know, fed up and give up. And we don't want to do that. So, you know, once you've got the pick going like this, I'll just stay on this chord for a minute. Now watch this, five and one. Okay, now the hammer works. You play the note open. And when do we hammer it on? because it's important it goes on at the right time. It hammers on when your thumb strikes this fifth string. If I, so keep your eye on this and keep your eye on my thumb and watch closely. See? And there's quite a bit of that in this piece and it's great to do. It works perfectly well without it, but when you put it in, it just adds that extra dimension. Okay, so I'll play it with the hammer. And then we go to the A minor. And there's another hammer there. Back to the same bit we've just done. And then when we get to the E seventh, there's a hammer on the third string. And then we start again. Now, it goes right back to the beginning. When we get to the very end of the piece, if I can find it, just bear with me, it's bits of paper all over the place. I don't need it, I'll just show you, it's easier. We, we, when we get to the to the last time round, part three, we're gonna do this, exactly the same as, as part one. But instead of going, we're gonna do this. That's the same. So page two would be, your little finger will play the first string at the eighth fret. If you look at the diagram, you'll see that. And you're gonna play five and one, four, three, five. Bring this finger into the left then and play one, four. That's all it is. Watch this little finger. Five and one, four, three, five, one, four. So instead of a two, four, it's a one, four. And then a five and one open, and then finish the, the, the E and the A minor. You did before. Let me play that again. So 
So without that little embellishment, it sounds like this. With the embellishment, it sounds like this. etc. So that is Tangerine Puppet. Oh, to end it, you can end it like this. And as I always say, you then accept the applause with grace and um, gratitude, with just a hint of smuggery. All right? So, Tangerine Puppet, it's well worth doing that one. It's a great track, look, it, look out for it. When Donovan does it, if you wanna play along with him, I'm not gonna play it on this, because I get copyright notices flying all over the place now. Um, so I can't be asked doing everything again. So um, have a listen to it. But do this one, it's really important. The first one I ever learned to do, to be honest, and it, got, got, it really, really uh, got me into using all those fingers, all right? Because you know, there are, there, there's always easy options uh, there's always like cheats that you can do but if they only go so far you can only cheat so much and then eventually you'll want to do something by i don't know chet atkins or, or one of these guys and you'll suddenly realize that you've got absolutely no chance unless you know how to use the uh, the fingers on on the right hand um did you look at my <laughs> did you look at my video about left-handed guitar players by the way because i'm left-handed i think i mentioned this the other day but i think uh, you know, one of the things that, that, that you need when you're playing guitar, it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed, in my head, the, the, the left hand for me um, needs, is the one I use to press the chord sound with, so a right-handed guitar, perfect. So it sort of follows though, doesn't it, that all those um, right-handed people that are, that are learning to play guitar, maybe really <laughs> they should be playing a left-handed guitar because their right hand is the stronger of the two which is what you require to press the uh, to press the chords down. People say, well, what about the strumming hand? Well, let me uh, assure you that it makes absolutely no difference when you start off, whether you're left hand or right hand. It's still hard to do. I did a little demo on that. There's a left handed guitar behind me and I couldn't play a bloody thing. It was, a, it was very embarrassing, really. But um, anyway, that's Tangerine Puppet. I hope you've enjoyed that lesson. I'm good. We've, we really must now move on to um, to some more plectrum work, some strumming work, some electric guitar work. We've spent quite a bit of time on this because I've had so much interest uh, in, with regard to the Travis picking or, or just general picking. Some people tick me off for calling it Travis picking because of course Mel Travis only used um, one finger, you know. He was limited what he could do. Great what he did, but he was limited. Um, but it's sort of become a generic term now, Travis picking. Yeah, everybody tends to use it, but technically it's incorrect. So we're doing more folk picking, if you like. But um, I'm going to call it Travis picking because that's what everybody else tends to call it. It's a bit like R&B. Remember the phrase R&B used to mean rhythm and blues. Remember that? Well, now it means some sort of rappy stuff and all that. I don't know what anything means anymore. I don't know. I remember when the word gay meant happy. Don't mean that anymore. You know, that's another political side of the thing we need to steer away from. But um, language changes, doesn't it? Right, on that note, uh, again, thank you very much for me 25,000 subscribers now, it's great. Thank you for those people who have hit that um, special thanks button, whatever it is. Um, nice surprise, actually, that. So uh, I'll see you uh, maybe midweek, something like that. Uh, I'm going to repost. I did a, a little um, thing on, uh, remember that book, Play in a Day? If you've not seen it, I watched it again yesterday because somebody was talking about Bert Whedon. Who, who, you know, he was great at his, for his time, but that book play today i had a big me big big problem with um i'm going to repost that review i did of that book maybe tomorrow just to give you something to look at over the next few days um while i'm working on some new stuff for you all right but until then thank you for tuning in and i shall see you uh in a day or two any suggestions give me a ring all right any questions you know fire them through and if i can answer them for you I'll do that. All right, you take care. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye for now.